morning all. Now, right next to some of my little solar lights, I have one of my IP security cameras. And these are the genuine thing, they're not dummies, these actually work. So inside there, there's an IP camera. This one, you can see, has a single uh, Cat5 cable running to it, that's Ethernet. Uh, it is a Ethernet uh, camera. The power also comes up that Ethernet cable. This is power over Ethernet. So you've got 48 volts DC running up two unused lines uh, of the eight lines inside that cable. And then inside the camera, there's a little butt converter which uh, switch mode regulates that 48 volts down to five volts for the electronics. And uh, here's another IP camera. This one's on the side of the house. It uh, overlooks the back gate. Now this one's not PoE, this one's actually a wireless camera and uh, recently I made a video about um, putting in a little 12 to 5 volt regulator in there so that this red and black cable could be connected directly to my battery bank, fed directly with 12 volts and that runs the camera. But of course the camera runs 24-7 so it's drawing about an amp continuously and that works in the summer, it doesn't work in the winter. So in the winter, these red and black cables will be connected to uh, a mains 12 volt adapter and I'll run them out through that little hole in the window. Now I've got another ethernet cable running up here across the top of the gate and down into that bush. And that goes to this camera. Can you see it? There it is, buried in the hedge another security camera and uh, inside in my workshop is uh, another one this time you can actually see the camera because it's not in an enclosure it's just plugged into a power strip there on the side of the shelf and uh, that's also that's wireless again um, so that's communicating with the wireless access point that's up the top there now these cameras are uh, visible externally on the internet so uh, each camera has a unique IP address, a uh, WAN IP address, which is patched through my Draytek router. Uh, I had to get quite an expensive router because not many routers do multiple WAN IP addresses and uh, this one lets you do all the patching and routing that uh, enables those to be visible from the internet. Now when I signed up to Zen Internet, well quite a few years ago now, I was lucky enough to be offered eight static uh, IP addresses, so I took the offer. I'm not sure whether it's possible to get eight statics anymore, but uh, I went for it. So one of my static IP addresses is allocated to this, which is my QNAP uh, server. This does a whole bunch of things, um, including being a web server. So my website, 256.co.uk, is actually there on that server. So that's one IP address. Now out of those eight static IP addresses, only five are usable. So the other four are all allocated to my IP cameras, or at least four of my IP cameras. Now this QNAT web server is a pretty versatile little thing. So one of the other facilities it's got is a security station. So what it does is it pulls live video streams off, uh, I think it's two of the IP cameras, and dumps those uh, live video streams to the hard disk. Um, that's one way in which the cameras are being recorded. And uh, the other mechanism that's taking place, this is a pan and tilt camera, which are quite cheap now. These weren't, these were expensive when I bought them. Um, is that all these cameras have an FTP upload facility so that periodically they will upload still images to an FTP server. And uh, I have an FTP server here in the house in a secret location. And these are uh, Edimax wireless access points. If you have several of them, you can set them up in what's called WDS, a wireless distributed system. And they all talk to each other and create a, a, a virtual network um, or sort of virtually connected through the wireless. So there's another one of these somewhere with the FTP server secretly um, scrolling away all those FTP images and keeping them safe. And uh, here is another of those wireless access points somewhere secret. 
So why am I showing all this? Well, these things absolutely fascinate me. This was a complete passion of mine uh, a few years ago. So for example, uh, this camera is the one up on the fence overlooking the back door. Uh, I seem to have left the back door open. So if I go into administration and I don't know, say network, you can see that this one is 192.168.131. I've set a subnet mask of 255.255.00 and the gateway of course is my router 192.168.1.1 Now you can see I've got no DNS uh, numbers in there because I don't need them and uh, I'm not using the dynamic DNS and uh, these things are great fun because there's just so much to fiddle with you know here's all the video stuff uh, resolution I've got to 64480 medium compression 30 frames a second uh, what else have we got? Uh, here's all the date and time stuff. This camera actually thinks it's 2004. Well, that doesn't really matter because um, I'm not using using scheduled uploads on these things. I'm just uploading continuously. So it doesn't really matter that the clock's wrong. But these are quite old cameras. You can see here that the live view modes are either ActiveX or Java. And these days, we really want apps. I mean, when I'm away and I've got my Nexus 7 tablet, what I really want is an app which will let me log into these cameras and see live video and for the pan and tilt cameras, move them up and right, up and down and left and right. So for example, a pan and tilt camera like this, I think um, uh, I was actually importing these at one time and selling them and I, this was 169 pounds. Well, I mean, you can get something like this now for 25 pounds. So I think it's time I bought one of these newer ones that has an app um, that you can control from a tablet and have a bit of a play with them. And since it was the IP cameras that taught me pretty much everything I know about TCP IP and how to configure these IP cameras, I thought I might do a series of videos on IP cameras, these old ones and the newer types, um, how to set up the IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway, the primary and secondary DNS, how to use dynamic DNS, what's DHCP, what's the advantage of static IP addresses over dynamic, all that kind of stuff. So uh, if anyone's got uh, any interest in learning about IP cameras and perhaps more importantly TCP IP, then uh, I'll certainly start that. And then as part of that series, I might look a little deeper into the implications of powering these cameras from 12 volts from a solar power system, because there are a number of advantages to doing that. So for example, if you go away on holiday, which is typically going to be in the summer, that's the time when these things do work um, on solar power. You could conceivably have cameras outdoors, solar powered, wireless, communicating with a network video recorder or just simply an FTP server, which you've hidden away in the shed, for example. Uh, probably be a good idea to uh, take the solar panels off the lawn and uh, put them somewhere a little less accessible, perhaps up on that extension roof maybe. So here on eBay, there's uh, a Wi-Fi wireless IP CCTV camera. It's only 25 pounds, free postage, pan and tilt. Uh, it's got night vision with those little infrared LEDs. The seller has 99.8% positive feedback. Uh, this is a UK seller, so I won't get stung with import VAT and duty. Now what have we got? 64480 maximum resolution. Well that's not brilliant but uh, at this price that's to be expected. Built-in microphone and speaker so you can talk to your intruder, tell him what a naughty person he is. Uh, TCP IP, HTTP, ICMP, DHCP, FTP, SMTP and PPPoE. Wireless uh, BGN. Oh yeah, this looks like fun. And uh, it says here, no worry to install the IE ActiveX. Well, that's a relief. And it supports iPhone and Android. Fantastic. Maybe that's the one.